Hi guys, this is Connie, back to read more of The Dogs of Winter. Connie reads The Dogs of Winter. This book is depressing, so somebody won't stay seated through all of it. But now we're on chapter 28, The Gangs. One morning, I awoke to a beautiful sound filling the train station. It was not the hiss and whir of the train track or the whistle of an approaching train. It was not the whoosh of the train doors opening and closing or the click click of the boot heels on the marble floors. This sound brought to mind summer and painted wooden horses going up and down and round and round in a circle and the circuses I had seen on TV. This sound soared and swooped and dipped like swallows. I jumped to my feet and clapped my hands. Do you hear it? I asked the dogs. Music! Lucky yawned and wagged his tails. tail yawned and wagged his tail. The dogs and I followed the sound. The maker of the music was a man with a long white beard. Against his chest, he held a box with uh, yellowed piano keys and shiny buttons. One hand swept across the keys while the other hand pushed the buttons. All the while, his arms squeezed the box in and out. It breathed, the box did, in great sighing and singing gulps like a dragon without fire. What is it? I asked the man. He turned his face in my direction but looked past me. It's an accordion, he said to the air beside me. I think that the accordion is the most beautiful sound on earth, I declared. The man smiled and nodded and played. I sat at the feet of this man and listened. I rocked and smiled and sometimes even danced. The dogs yipped. Lucky tried to sing along. And as always, the clink, clink of money in his tin. At the end of the day, the man of the accordion folded his stool and put the money from the tin into a small leather bag. Where are you, boy? He asked, his milk-colored eyes passing over me. I laughed. Why, I'm right here. He gave me a handful of rubles. You brought, brought me luck today. Thank you very much. I had not seen so much money in a long time. The man of the accordion unfolded a long white cane with a red tip. You're most welcome, young man. He slung his accordion over his shoulder and tap tapped his way down the long hallway to the stairs. Again, he was there the next day and the day after and the day after that. And always, I sat with him and listened to his music. Good morning, I would say to him as he unfolded his stool and folded his long white cane. Good morning to you too, my young friend he would say, smiling in the general direction of my face. Halfway through his day of playing, he would hand me a wad of rubles and say, we need food and drink if we are uh, to play and dance the rest of the day. Do you think someone is selling pierogi today? Up the stairs, the dogs and I would dash in search of pierogi. I liked my pie filled with cheese. The old man of the accordion preferred his stuffed with potatoes. After the second day, he gave me an extra coin and said, the dogs need lunch too. The days passed now with music and dancing and hot pierogi. I did not feel bad taking some of the old man's money at the end of every day. He said I brought him luck. Who can resist an old blind man and a young boy with dogs, he said, as I walked him up the stairs to the world above. That night the wind was sharp as a knife, but it had warmed up enough to snow. Ah, said the old man. Perhaps that killing cold has finally broken. I nodded. His hand gripped my shoulder. But what about you, my, my young friend? Where do you go at night? Go? Do you have a home? This is my home, I said. Mine and the dogs. He sighed like his accordions. I have heard of children like you. Ah. Uh. Besprizoniki, the neglected ones. It is Russia's dark shame. I shrugged. We are warm, the dogs and I, and not as hungry, thanks to you. The old man shook his head, his long white beard waggling, or wagging, waggling, yeah, waggling. It's a weird word. You must be careful, my friend. It is not safe for a young boy like you. There are gangs of teenage boys just looking for someone weaker to prey upon. He shook his head again. Very bad, these boys. They are like wolves. I had seen these gangs of boys the old man talked about 
They wore chains and leather, leather, and their hair rose in impossible ways. From time to time, they would approach me, flinging hard, nasty words in my face. If I had spoken those words, my mother would have slapped me. But I was not afraid of these gangs. The dogs never let them get close. I touched the old man's hand. Don't worry, the dogs watch over me. This is a long, this is a really long chapter and there's a break point here, so I'm gonna cut this off as uh, part one. Be careful with that and enjoy, please and thank you. And I will try my best to start part two. Bye.